Do I hear a motion to approve item 1A, the minutes of April 8th? Motion made. Do I hear a second? Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, minutes of the April 8th meeting are approved. Thank you. Uh, we will now proceed with our policy items. Um, policy calendar. Will President Karen Gould join us to introduce IB1, a naming opportunity at Brooklyn College? The mics are on. They're on. Can you all, hear me? All the mics, yes. all the mics are Excellent. on throughout the meeting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I will meet, uh, read the resolution. This is the naming of the Barry R. Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York authorizes the establishment of the Graduate School of Cinema at Brooklyn College, which will house three master's programs sponsored by the Department of Film, and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approves the naming of the Barry R. Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema at Brooklyn College in recognition of the gift of five Point five million from Barry R. Fierstein, a member of the Brooklyn College Class of 1974 and current chair of the Brooklyn College Foundation. This, uh, the explanation of this resolution is that the Graduate School of Cinema, the Barry R. Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema, will be located at Steiner Studios on a working film lot and um, occupying the entire sixth floor and most of the fifth floor uh, which constitutes uh, a little over 69,000 square feet. Uh, this is a lease, and uh, we will have six new MFA degree programs there um, that have already been approved by our own faculty and several more on the docket. It's a very exciting project. The only graduate school of cinema anywhere in the country located on a working film lot. Um, at a price tag that will be most advantageous as compared to other um, film schools, both public and private, around the country. We believe that it will um, attract many graduate students of high quality, both in New York City and New York State and out of state as well. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? just want to uh, compliment the President uh, on bringing this uh, important uh, new uh, entity to Brooklyn College. Uh, Doug Steiner, who's a fellow I know well, uh, is very excited about uh, citing the cinema school at Steiner Studios. And uh, Barry Fierstein is a, uh, a great, great graduate. Uh, and I think, uh, Karen, the best is yet to come. Yes, thank you very much. And I want to thank our Dean, Maria Canelli as well, for shepherding much of the academic program. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Congratulations, yes. Um, let me see. President um, Lisa. 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 Please join us to present items I, B, 2, is that I? <laughs> One. One, B, 2, and 1, B, 3 on behalf of the City College of New York. Thank you very much. Um, I will read the first resolution. Uh, be it resolved that the proposed amendment to the governance plan of the City College be adopted effective July 1st, 2013. And here's the explanation. Um, the City College of New York proposes to update Article 3 and revise the Graduate Student Association governance. The proposed amendment would change the name of the Graduate Student Association to Graduate Student Council. The language of Article 3 was refined to reflect some changes in CCNY's administrative structure since the adoption of the current governance plan in 1999. The allocation of seats on the Student Council is being changed to distribute seats more equally among the different schools and divisions. 
the proposed amendment was based on a student-led initiatives and would modernize and improve the graduate student organization's activities on campus. The CCNY Faculty Senate approved this amendment on October 18, 2012, and CCNY's president recommends, I recommend its adoption. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the second item um, is uh, regards to City College and the use of the City <coughs> College uh, name. The resolution is as follows. Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York authorizes the incorporation of the City College Center for the Arts, Inc., pursuant to the provisions of the not-for-profit corporation law of the State of New York and consents to the use of the City College as part of the name of the center. And this is the explanation. The City College desires to establish a not-for-profit corporation to operate a performing arts center in Dar Aaron Davis Hall for the benefit of the college community and New York City and to receive outside funding. This resolution provides approval by the Board of Trustees for the filing of a, cert a certificate of incorporation under New York State law that uses the name of the college as part of the name of the new corporation. This was also approved by the Faculty Senate. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Well, may I now ask President Russ Holzler to join us to present item 1B4, amendments to the governance plan of City Tech. Thank you. Uh, the resolution uh, states it's uh, resolved that the proposed amendments to the governance plan of New York City College of Technology be adopted effective July 1, 2013. Uh, the amendments to the governance plan of the college uh, primarily synchronized the plan with the college's current practices and with SUNY poli CUNY policies. The changes were approved by the college council on March 16, 2010, and by the college faculty on April 30th, 2010, and March 5th, 2013. As proposed, the plan would clarify the roles of officers of the College Council, the Executive Committee, and the Committee on Committees. Um, it would also delete procedures um, for electing departmental delegates, uh, delegates at large, and student delegates to the College Council, since those procedures appear in the College's bylaws. It would impose a time limit for votes on the college's instructional uh, staff when making changes to the governance plan. The proposed amendments also include provisions that bring the governance plan into compliance with recently adopted and amended CUNY policies concerning academic integrity, faculty student disciplinary uh, committees, and uh, the resolution of student complaints. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, there being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Sherry Newcomb, Vice President for Finance and Administration and um, we'll present item 1B5, Naming Opportunity at Queensborough Community College. Good evening. Um, I'll read the resolution. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the naming of the Charles F. Bova Sr. Veterans Memorial located adjacent to the Kupferberg Holocaust Resource Center at Queensborough Community College. Uh, the explanation is that in 2013, our president, Dr. Diane Bova-Call, pledged $25,000 to the Queensborough Community College Fund 
The gift was made in honor of her father, Charles F. Boba Sr., who received a Bronze Star dur during World War II as a first sergeant in the United States Third Army. Sergeant Boba was among the first U.S. Army troops who liberated the Dachau concentration camp. The gift is restricted to the Kupferberg Holocaust Resource Center and Archives and the National Endowment for the Humanities uh, Fund. The uh, National Endowment for the Humanities Fund um, is a challenge grant that Queensboro received whereby we receive a 50% match uh, for all donations to the Kupferberg Holocaust Resource Center. And this would this uh, donation of Dr. Call um, is eligible for that challenge grant. So I um, would ask your, respectfully ask your uh, consideration of this resolution. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Uh, next will be um, President Marcia Keyes will join us to present item 1B6, naming, <clears throat> excuse me, naming of the Performing Arts Center at York College. Thank you. Uh, our resolution seeks the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approval for the naming of the Milton G. Basson Performing Arts Center at York College. Uh, a 1944 graduate of the City College of New York, Milton Basson had a long and distinguished career at CUNY in faculty and administrative roles, ultimately serving as president of two colleges, first at City Tech, uh, 1966 to 71, and then at York College, 71 to 1991. It is generally held within the university community and certainly at York College and the co college campus that um, Milton Basson's role in developing York was critical. During the New York City's fiscal crisis, he became revered in the community for his sterling defense of the college's ex existence and the retention of our senior college status overcoming many obstacles until state funding became available. President Basson passed away recently in August 2012. His family and friends and the college community are engaged in raising substantial funds to provide scholarships in his name due to his singular role in nurturing the growth of your college. The college recommends the naming of the Performing Arts Center in honor of Milton G. Basson. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve item 1B6? So moved. Okay, motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. I will now ask Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost Lexa Logue to present the appointments of five new distinguished professors. We will consider these five items as a group. Okay, I'm going to go through um, all five of them and I'll do them alphabetically. Uh, so the first one is Joshua Freeman, Professor Freeman, an eminent historian whose reputation was forged in the area of labor, labor history, has held the rank of full <coughs> professor at Queens College since 2000. In addition, he has served as executive officer for the PhD program in history at the Graduate Center. Um, professor Freeman earned his doctorate at Rutgers. He's published three books that have garnered multiple awards. An example is his book, Working Class New York, Life and Labor Since World War II, which was published by the New Press in 2000 and was awarded the New York Society Library Book Prize for History. Um, Professor Freeman is widely respected within academia as well as in the public arena, and he's often called upon to speak, write, and consult in a variety of media. <coughs> Queens College and the City University of New York will be well served by Professor Freeman's appointment as distinguished professor. Next is Daniel Greenberger. 
Um, Professor Greenberger has an international reputation as a leading quantum physics theorist. A longtime member, member of the physics department at City College, he has anchored physics at both City College and the Graduate Center, where he's a member of the doctoral faculty of the PhD program in physics. Professor Greenberger took his PhD in physics at the University of Illinois. His scholarly reputation stems from his seminal work in quantum mechanics in creating a celebrated theorem which is known as the GHZ theorem. Professor Greenberger continues to conduct research and to publish papers exploring the fundamentals of physics and has conducted important work in neutron interferometry and the relationship between gravitational theory and quantum theory. City College and the City University of New York will be well served by Professor Greenberger's appointment as distinguished professor. Next is Jeremy Kahn. Professor Kahn is a leading mathematician and a scholar of great distinction. Coming to us from the position of professor of mathematics at <coughs> Brown University, he earned his doctorate from the University of California, Berkeley. Professor Kahn's pathbreaking research focuses on complex dynamics, complex analysis, and hyperbolic geometry. In 2012, he won the coveted Clay Research Award from the Clay Mathematics Institute for his groundbreaking research. The Graduate Center and the City University of New York will be well served by Professor Kahn's appointment as distinguished professor. This is a major coup for the university to get Jeremy Kahn. He's very young also. <laughs> okay, the fourth one. <laughs> the fourth one is Yunping Zhang. Dr. Zhang specializes in dynamical systems and complex analysis. He's an international authority on chaotic dynamics. He began his career at Queens College shortly after receiving his doctorate from the CUNY Graduate Center. The author of nearly 80 publications, Professor Zhang is the recipient of grants from the National Science Foundation and the Simon Foundation. He's currently editor of three major professional journals. Queens College and the City University of New York will be well served by Professor Jang's appointment as distinguished professor. And the fifth one is Megan Vaughn. Uh, professor Vaughn is an internationally renowned scholar in African history and one of the world's preeminent historians of Africa and comparative colonialism. She comes to the Graduate Center from the University of Cambridge where she has served as the Smuts Professor of Commonwealth Studies, a fellow at King's College, and the director of the Center of African Studies. She's a fellow of both the British Academy and the Royal Historical Society. Professor Vaughn has published five groundbreaking books. For example, her book, Creating the Creole Island, subtitled Slavery in 18th Century Mauritius, published by Duke University Press in 2005, was honored as the best book in colonial history by the French Colonial History Society. The Graduate Center in the City University of New York will be well served by Professor Vaughn's appointment as distinguished professor. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Just, just a question. My eyesight isn't as good as it used to be. Is that compensation uh, $68,000 or $28,000? Compensation? What compensation? Where are you talking about? The incremental compensation. Is that $28,000 oh, for? I think it's 28. It's 28. 28. Yes. For, for, for all distinguished. distinguished professors with phenomenal records. I just wanted, I thought I was well, reading it. Sorry. There are other opportunities for them to earn a salary. So. It's, it's governed by the collective bargain. I understand that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Any further discussion? No. Um, there being none, I will ask the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item 1B12 has been removed from the agenda, so we will move to item 1B13, amendments to the governance plan of the graduate school. Will Provost Chase Robinson please join us? Thank you very much. I'll read the resolution to start. The Board of Trustees approved the proposed amendments to the governance plan of the graduate school of the Graduate School University Center as set forth in the attachment effective the 1st of September 2013. The explanation. 
The amendments to the governance plan of the Graduate School of the Graduate School and University Center are designed to update our governance plan. Specifically, the language has been revised in Section 6.1 to allow appointment of faculty directly to master's programs and to extend the guidelines and criteria for faculty appointments to include both doctoral and master's programs. Why are we doing this? Well, because currently only doctoral faculty are permitted to be appointed to teach in master's programs, with the exception outlined in 6.2. The increase in the number of new master's programs at the Graduate Center, from 9 to 23 tracks, and especially the increase in enrollment in our MALS program, an increase of about 200 percent in the last three years, make it necessary to modify the Graduate School's governance in this way. Section 6.2 has been modified to address only certificate programs since master's programs will be addressed in 6.1. Section 4.2e has also been modified to include the current practice of appointment of an advisory committee by the president only for a new certificate program's first year after which the program's approved governance guides the process. The amendments were approved by the Graduate Council on May 8, 2013 and are recommended by the president. Thank you. Uh, do we hear a motion to approve? So moved. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Next will be um, President Jeremy Travis, and he will present item 1B14, a naming opportunity at John Jay College. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, I'm pleased to come before you today to seek your approval for a resolution that would name a lecture hall at John Jay College uh, in honor of Richard Kohler. Uh, Richard Kohler wears many hats in the uh, life of the college. He's an alumnus of the college. He's a trustee of the John Jay College Foundation. Uh, he is the uh, recently appointed chair of our alumni committee. Uh, he uh, also is a member of our faculty. Uh, and he's a longtime uh, and very generous supporter of uh, John Jay. Uh, he has a distinguished record uh, in addition to his service for the college uh, in city government. He was the chief of personnel in the NYPD. Uh, and Commissioner of Corrections in the Koch administration. Uh, and since leaving John Jay, he founded a, uh, a law firm, Kohler & Isaacs, which is a prominent labor law firm uh, in the city. Uh, and he is, uh, in many ways, deeply grateful to John Jay for all of the things that have been made possible in his professional life. So we approached him to ask whether he would be um, uh, amenable to having a classroom, a lecture hall named after him in recognition of his uh, uh, commitment over the years, which now is uh, over $175,000. Uh, this will be the first uh, classroom to be named in our new building, and uh, we think it's highly appropriate that this be named for our friend and colleague, uh, Richard Kohler. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve item 1B14, a naming opportunity at John Jay College? So moved. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. The final policy item on our agenda is a particularly special one. President Lisa, may I ask you to join us to present item 1B15? Thank you very much. To mark the transformational impact that the Chancellor has had on our campus at City College and on CUNY as a whole, I am asking the University's Board of Trustees to name the area that houses City College's and CUNY's new science and research buildings, the Matthew Goldstein Science Complex. Across the universe, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> he 
truly has been transformational. Across the university, the colleges, colleges have recruited and hired many new faculty members in fields of science that are crucial to future advances. On our South Campus alone, two new buildings will open in fall 2014, where brilliant scientists will be able to work. None of this would have happened had it not been for Chancellor Goldstein's Decade of Science initiative. The multi-billion dollar financing he gave and made happen, and his unrelenting drive to reposition CUNY in the sciences. The Matthew Goldstein Science Complex will include the following. City College's new science building where our faculty will explore areas including bioorganics, molecular and cellular design, environmental sciences, and material sciences. It will also include the CUNY Advanced Science Research Center where researchers from across the university will use cutting edge technology to broaden our understanding of nanotechnology, photonics, structural biology, neuroscience, and environmental sciences. To further enhance the scope of research that CUNY scientists could undertake, we hope that in the not distant future, a second ASRC building will rise next to the one that is nearing completion. And finally, the third building that will be included in the Matthew Goldstein Science Complex is the New York City Structural Biology Center a consortium of 10 leading research university institutions, including CUNY, of course, that is the nation's premier center for structural biology. Long after Chancellor Goldstein steps down as chancellor this summer, long after the decade of science ends, what I hope will be the only the first phase in 2015, the university will reflect his vision and his commitment. This flagship science complex testifies to Matthew Goldstein's vision, creativity, and tenacity. It deserves to bear his name. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? Second. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. And again, congratulations. Okay. All right. Um, President Lisa, we're going to change the order of the agenda. So, President Lisa, if you will now. Um, I introduced the new senior vice president. Um, yes, okay. It's Maurizio Trevisan. Introduce the new senior vice president and provost at City College. Um, thank you very much. Um, I would like to recommend to the board, and it is my pleasure, um, to recommend that the board approve the appointment of Dr. Maurizio Trevisan um, as the permanent provost at the City College of New York. Maurizio has been the acting provost since this past September. He is a world-renowned physician scientist and researcher in the areas of public health and risky attitudes and health attitudes in the areas of alcoholism, diabetes, and heart disease. Um, he went through the search process. It was a national search. Um, and he went through exactly the same search process as all of the candidates uh, using according to our governance rules. And he was the overwhelming um, majority favorite to have the position and be appointed as the senior vice president and provost. So I recommend him to you today. He is in Italy at a conference, so he is unable to be here. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve item 1C3? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And now we are going to have President Mitchell Wallerstein join us to introduce items 1C1 and 1C2 two appointments at Baruch College. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. I am pleased to uh, recommend to you the appointment of uh, Dr. David Christie 
as Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost at Baruch College. Unfortunately, like the case of uh, President Koiko, uh, uh, Dr. Christie is un unavoidably not here. Uh, he is in China on uh, business for the uh, AACSB, the Business Accreditation Organization. Uh, but I would like to present uh, you with some information about him. Uh, Dr. Christie has served for the last nine years as the Dean of the Orfalea College of Business at California Polytechnic State University. Uh, prior to that, he was for 16 years a member of the faculty and then uh, Associate Dean for Undergraduate Programs at the Smeal College of Business at uh, Penn State University. Uh, he uh, is also, as you can uh, I mentioned, uh, very active in accreditation matters dealing with the AACSB. Uh, what I particularly like uh, also is that he has a liberal arts background, both at the undergraduate and master's degree level. Uh, Dr. Christie would begin his appointment in, on July 15th, and I ask your approval. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Yes, he has another one. I have and a, you have another one. A yes. second uh, appointment to recommend to you, which is the actually a promotion of Ms. Christina Latou, who is uh, currently serving as Assistant Vice President for Communications, Marketing, and Public Affairs. Uh, reporting to me as president of the college, and we are recommending her promotion to vice president for communications, external relations, and economic development at Baruch College. Uh, Christina has been with Baruch College for five years. Prior to that, she served for 18 years as uh, executive director for marketing communications at Time Warner. Uh, one of the uh, reasons for this promotion has to do with her extraordinary work uh, as the point person for Baruch College on our recent uh, acquisition of a public plaza on 25th Street, and that process is, is continuing. Uh, we have also assigned uh, Ms. Latouf additional responsibilities, uh, including in the area of economic development. Uh, she has a very broad span of control and has shown herself able to carry on all of these activities with great professional accomplishment, and I recommend her appointment. Great. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Would you like to say Thank you. Yes, I would just like to say that it's been a pleasure serving Baruch and CUNY, and I look forward to doing so in my expanded role. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Provost Robinson, please introduce item 1C4, an appointment at the Graduate School and University Center. Thank you. What um, we seek your agreement to do is to appoint Dr. Louise D. Lenahan is interim provost and senior vice president of academic affairs at the Graduate Center, effective the 1st of July of 2013. Dr. Lenahan is not in China or in Italy. She's here to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Louise is exceptionally well qualified to assume the position of provost and senior vice president. She did her PhD at Columbia, trained as a cultural anthropologist, working on West Africa. She conducted archival and field research in northern Nigeria on several occasions. She joined the anthropology department at the Graduate Center um, in 1987, having started Hunter College in 1982. She served as executive officer of the PhD program in anthropology from 1997 to 2008 and oversaw nothing less than the renaissance <coughs> of that program. For the past four years, she has served uh, as Associate Provost and Dean for the Humanities and Social Sciences at the Graduate Center. And in, in addition to putting up with me, she in fact has um, uh, 
uh, many accomplishments to her name. In that capacity, she served as my deputy. She's overseen the majority of the multi-year fellowships, other student fellowship programs, Office of Financial Aid, the Office of Educational Opportunity and Diversity, Annual Dissertation Awards, Student Academic Appeals, the PMP, the Mellon Fellowship Program. I could exhaust your patience by enumerating her responsibilities. It is a great pleasure for me to make this request. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve item 1C4? So moved. Motion made. Do I hear a second? second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to you guys? Uh, just a word or two. As the Graduate Center's Associate Provost for the last four and a half years, I've had the opportunity to work closely with Provost Robinson, as he noted. And so, <laughs> as he and President Kelly deepen their service to the university, so will I as interim provost of the Graduate Center. I'm humbled and honored by the board's judgment, and I'm delighted to serve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost <coughs> Stuart Suss. Please join us to introduce item 1C5, an appointment at Kingsborough Community College. <coughs> Resolve that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the appointment of David Gomez to be Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost of Kingsborough Community College, effective September 1, 2013. Explanation. President Regina Perucci will relinquish the presidency of Kingsborough Community College on August 31, 2013. And Dr. Stewart Suss, it's me. Uh, who currently <laughs> serves as the college's vice president for academic affairs and provost, who will become interim president. The resulting, resulting vacancy in the provost office requires strong leadership. David Gomez is highly qualified to assume the responsibilities of interim provost and to provide that leadership. Dr. Gomez has 39 years of experience in senior administration positions at CUNY, 26 of which have been at Kingsborough Community College. Dr. Gomez currently serves as the Vice President for Academic Administration, Program Planning, Development at Kingsborough Community College. He is responsible for the coordination of all interdivisional activities, including financial oversight for academic affairs, student affairs, and finance and administration. He also oversees the implementation of both college initiatives and CUNY-initiated new efforts, including the College Civic Engagement Initiative, CUNY First Campus Solutions, CUNY Start, College Focus, and the CUNY Service Corps. Dr. Gomez holds a Bachelor of Arts in English Literature and a Master's Degree in Higher Education Administration from the State University of New York at Albany. He earned his Doctorate in Education Degree in Higher Education Administration from Columbia University. Dr. Gomez is also a tenured member of Kingsborough's Department of Behavioral Sciences. The president of Kingsborough College strongly, strongly recommends this appointment, and he did have to come all the way from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations, David Gomez. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, as Shakespeare observed, uh, brevity is indeed the soul of wit. So as I conclude my 39th year and enter my 40th, while I can't promise to uh, serve with the same elegance and grace as my predecessor, I will do my best. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, we will now have President Gail Mello, who will introduce item 1C6, an appointment at LaGuardia Community College. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here and ask the board's um, 
Uh, support of a recommendation to appoint Susan Lighting as um, our acting vice president. Susan's worked in a variety of nonprofit and um, communication and advocacy work over her career. She's also worked in Ireland, Japan, and Indonesia, making her uniquely qualified for our very international student body. She has been working at LaGuardia in a variety of positions over the last several years. She's made dramatic changes um, when she was director of marketing. We have a new brand and a new logo. She um, increased by a huge factor the number of articles we got in the New York Times. Um, she launched our social media campaign. And I believe she's the only person I know of who can get Trustee D. Martino and myself into a Russian newspaper, which was oh, quite exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's also been recently taking over the position um, with the um, when our senior when our vice president of advancement left, taking over the position of helping with external fundraising. We will end this year at minimum. We're having our fundraiser tomorrow night. It's been a big week for us. Um, up at least 12%. She secured Lloyd Blankfein, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, as our graduation speaker. She really just, in every way, is an extraordinary fine and has been wonderful at LaGuardia. And I hope with your support, she will continue to do great things. Great. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve? So move. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you, President Mello, and thank you, trustees. Um, it's really been an honor to serve um, at LaGuardia and CUNY for the past five years. And uh, without a doubt, it's really been the highlight of my career. And as you all know, LaGuardia is a really amazing institution and one that I'm incredibly proud to serve because it really has the power to transform both lives and communities. Um, and it's really been a, a privilege to witness these transformations first time over the course of my service. Um, and I'm proud to have played a role uh, under the leadership of Dr. Mello in these transformations, and I hope to continue this service for years to come. So thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I will now call on Kenneth Norris from the Office of Academic Affairs to present item 1C7, an appointment of a faculty member requiring a bylaw waiver at Baruch College. Uh, good evening, yes, this is an appointment of Andrew Lesniewski as a professor with immediate tenure with a, a waiver of bylaw 6.2.B. Uh, Mr. Lesniewski holds a PhD in mathematics from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. For most of the 1990s, he was an associate professor of mathematical physics at Harvard University, but has never earned tenure at a college or university. Due to his unique experience and credentials, Baruch College believes Ms. Dr. Lesniewski's appointment with immediate tenure is in the best interest of the college and therefore requests a waiver of previous tenure requirement in bylaw 6.2.B. Okay, do I hear motion to approve item 1C7? So moved. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our final matter concerns appointment of a new vice president at Queens College. May I ask Merrill Kaynard, general counsel to the president, to join us to introduce item 1C8. Uh, President Meiskens apologizes that he was unable to be here tonight. He's uh, out of the country, and but very enthusiastic about this request and this motion. Why are we here? Why are we here? <laughs> He's in Brazil. Brazil, so. yeah. <laughs> It's the year of Brazil at Queens College next year. We have to prepare. Um, I uh, uh, had the pleasure of uh, chair chairing the search committee, and I'm pleased to be here on his behalf. Um, the, the resolution we're seeking uh, to have approved is as follows, that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the appointment of William Keller 
as Vice President for Finance and Administration at Queens College, effective July 15, 2013. Um, our explanation um, uh, is that Queens College is uh, uh, seeking this appointment uh, given Mr. Keller's over 30 years of experience leading and managing large and complex organizations. Most recently, since 2005, he has served as Vice President for Finance and Administration at Queensborough College, where Kingsborough, sorry, Community College, where he was a member of the President's senior leadership team and was responsible for planning and day-to-day uh, -day management of all financial and administrative functions of the college. Um, I will just uh, add that uh, it is our understanding, and uh, it's much appreciated, that uh, Mr. Keller's practical, hands-on approach and understanding of the uh, uh, overall issues and knowledge of CUNY policies and procedures resulted in an impressive and speedy recovery for the waterfront location at, at uh, Kingsboro after Hurricane Sandy. And uh, he will not be bored at Queens College. Uh, we had a tornado and earthquake, hurricanes and storms in the last couple of years. So we <laughs> promise to fully utilize his skills and abilities in that arena and, and many others. Um, uh, Mr. Keller's previous positions in higher education, government, healthcare, and private sector finance, technology, and management consulting make him highly qualified for the position. Uh, his educational background is outlined in our resolution and um, the support for his uh, nomination was, is widespread. We had a, a nationwide search and quite a rigorous uh, procedure uh, to be sure that he met uh, all of the folks he would be working with, and uh, it's uh, beyond unanimous that we'll be very fortunate to have him in our midst. He brings the depth of experience, knowledge, and personal intellectual contributions required to ensure that Queens College has the leadership and guidance necessary to continue to provide superior services to the large and diverse college community that is Queens College, and we're thrilled. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve the appointment of William Keller as Vice President for Finance and Administration at Queens College, item 1C8? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. Bill, just before you say, I just want to say this is an outstanding appointment. Bill has been one of the real leaders among all the vice presidents in this university. I'm very glad for my alma mater. Merrill, you did a great job in this search. Thank, Thank you. Bill, do you want to say um, a few words? Yes. Um, I wanted to uh, say how happy I am with this appointment, and uh, I wanted to thank uh, um, uh, President Perugi, Provost Suss, David Gomez, and others for teaching me most of what I know about higher education, and Alan and others for teaching me most of what I know about technology and management, because I've worked for Alan at DeWitt and Board of Ed. So it's great. I'm very excited and uh, look forward to um, moving from Kings to Queens County. <laughs> Kings and to I Queens. just hope my colleagues at Kingsborough forgive me. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Um, section 2 advises the committee of a number of reappointments with early tenure pursuant to the bylaws. These items appear for information purposes only and do not require a report or a vote. So, <coughs> do I now hear a motion to adjourn? Hmm? Adjourn? To adjourn. Yes, okay, we are now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all.